jumping into Bright for a second, uh, you got to, or you're going to be working with David, and I guess it's his next movie. Yes, it is. And so talk about, uh, for people that don't know what it's about, it's a pretty crazy pitch. Um, so talk a little bit about what it's about. Well, without spoiling anything, first of all, you know that the reason I'm working with David is because I wrote a script intentionally aping David's style because I, I find him to be such an inspiration, the way he writes, the way he thinks about movies. Uh, and I wrote on the cover, dedicated to David Ayer. <laughs> and then when he read it, he was like, oh, man. yeah, that's pretty good, I guess. Yeah, and I was like, okay. And so we dicked around for like two months, and he was like, yeah, I'm directing. It's my next movie, I guess. I was like, what? Like, I remember I got so, I was in uh, LACMA in LA, and I went, like that. He called me and said it so casually. Uh, but yeah, Bright is kind of hard to explain, because uh, it's so simple. Basically, Dungeons and Dragons, Lord of the Rings, mainstream Western fantasy, right? Uh, elves, orcs, dragons, Warcraft does this, so many things do this. That was biblical times. So that all happened, a version of that, the quest, the RPG world happened, and then thousands of years passed and things sort of slowly evened out. And we finally got to a point where you're Steven, I'm Max, the camera guy's an orc, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. I mean, you know what they say about orcs. I mean, they were the servants of the Dark Lord, but that was 2,000 years ago. He's sure. just an orc. He's from Glendale. You know, it's, it's not a big deal. If, there's, if you go to a building and there's a giant accessible entrance, entrance, you know, good for them. They're being PC. Some places serve centaurs, some don't. If you want to see a dragon, you're not going to see one in the wild. You don't see a lion walking up, you know, Hollywood Boulevard. You got to go to the zoo and you can see dragons from all over the world. No one uses magic anymore. In fact, you know, I have my doubts that magic ever really existed. But, you know, it, it's, sure, I mean, like quantum physics, string theory, I get that there are people who could theoretically use magic, but why do you need to teleport when you can take an airplane? Why do you need to cast a spell when you can pull a trigger? Why do you need to be psychic when you can just call someone on a cell phone? And it's a cop movie, a very grounded relationship story between two officers of the LAPD set in this world. That, that's, it, that's shocking that David would be interested in working with the LAPD. <laughs> uh, I've never heard David work in that genre. Well, it's him doing, it's him doing, it's, it's interesting because it's, it, it's him doing him, but it's also him doing me. So it's a little bit sweeter. Uh, it, it's a little bit more talky. And uh, the action, when it comes, is insane. <laughs> right, but I, I heard that it's going to be like a hard R. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. They're so, LAPD officers. We're not cutting corners. This isn't fucking Frodo. Right, but what I'm saying is if they encounter an orc and shit's gone wrong, are, is there like a color blood in the script? Is it like green? Like what color is the... You, you know, know what, what I mean? color orc blood is? Well, you know what I mean? Like when there's an... Like, did you write in the script? Yeah, of course. No, right. no, 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 no. I have gone to a degree that's like embarrassing full J.R.R. Tolkien on this. Like, there are... David's, like, almost kind of, like, low-key overwhelmed by it. There are sub-documents of each of the races that detail the history of this world on and on and on and on. I think I have, like, 30 pages of just talking about different rules and weird things and the races and nuances and the different stereotypes in the modern world about each one of the races. I've gone... I've gone ham on this. I, I really... I do. I want this to be my Star Wars. Like, I, 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 it's ultimately, I guess it'll be David's Star Wars because he's making it, but I'm so, I'm producer of it, so I guess I get to stick around if there's a sequel this time. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, it's, uh, well, let, let me ask you a question. Yeah, I could just talk about it forever. No, no, no. Uh, where and when are you filming it this year? Uh, or is it early next year? I, no, it's this year. I think we start September. I think we start in September. I don't have the start date on hand, but we we had to shoot like a little tiny piece of it already in order to keep our L.A. rebate. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So it was sick. I have all this like graffiti in my phone that says, fuck elves. And I'm like, David, thank you. Thank you. I love you. I just, uh, I, every time I get a text from him, this is me getting a text from David Ayer. Pretend we're in a serious business meeting. Yeah. So, yeah, a $50 million buyout and this and that. <laughs> Me getting a text from um, I've spoken to a lot of filmmakers and producers that have been working with Netflix recently, and they are raving. It is fucking awesome. Yeah, no, everyone is saying the same thing. Like, they give you a check, and, like, you give them, and they give very little notes, or their notes are really good. They give you a check, they give you some compliments, they point out something you already had to fix, and then they go, go make it. Right, it's, that's what everyone's been saying. It is, I mean, it's the next, it's the next thing. And, and I hate to say that because I love movies, but 
this methodology, the job of a creative exec, there's no college for that. There's no college course where you, where you go and you learn how to give notes on a script. So the notes you're getting in the development process are just from people who have as much experience or you know lack of experience as you do. And sometimes they're great and often they're awful. But the fact that they get to give the notes at all is part of their buy-in to the script, which is their buy-in of saying, we're now taking a risk, risk on you by giving you this money for a box office return. Well, Netflix doesn't have to think about that because there is no box office. They believed in the idea, okay, I want to see that. They give you the money and then you get to go make it. I mean, it's, it's the dream. No, I, every, listen, everyone I've spoken to has been raving about working with them Literally everyone. I have not heard one bad word, which is, it says something oh, yeah. when a company can pull that off. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.